this entire year, we have been covering in depth the investigation and now the trial involving Lori Vallow Daybell, the so-called doomsday cult mom. And we have covered every twist and turn here on Court TV, uh, showing you everything. But there she is. The one thing that really hasn't happened is we haven't heard much from Lori Daybell. You know, in a couple body cam videos with police, she talks a little bit in a very controlled situation, a very cold reaction to the death of, of her husband, Charles. Uh, we saw that. But we never really heard Lori Vallow Daybell unleashed and speaking out. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, tonight you will hear Lori Vallow Daybell speak on this program. Newly uncovered audio recordings of her. And wow, she's not talking, though, about Charles Vallow, husband number four. She's talking about husband number three, Joseph Ryan. All right, let's, let's take a look at who Joseph Ryan is, right? Third husband, Tylee's father, died in April of 2018 of an apparent heart attack. The recordings that you will hear tonight involve her thoughts about this man months after he dies. Shocking stuff. Let's take a listen. I had um, been married to someone who was very awful, who raped my children. And um, I had divorced him and gotten away from him. And he had joined the church. He spoke in state conference. Everyone thought he was wonderful. He was a very good showman of all those things. And after we were divorced, um, he told everybody that I was this lying, crazy Mormon and got up in court and said all these horrible things about me and turned it around to where the judges believed him instead of me. And he was constantly trying to get custody of my three-year-old daughter and just to rub it in my face. And um, I went through a lot of years of, of this kind of hard stuff. And I was going to murder him. I was going to kill him, like the scriptures say, like Nephi killed him, just to stop the pain and to stop him coming after me and to stop him coming after my children. And I was just... I just thought I couldn't take it anymore. And I would go through the scriptures and find all the things, like if he comes against you once, if he comes against you twice, if he comes against you three times, then you can kill him. It says it in the scriptures. And <laughs> more of it. I'm like, there it is. There's my answer. I don't want to do anything that's wrong. I did not have a murderous heart. I just wanted to stop the bleeding and stop the pain. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. And the other thing, I mean... The, the demeanor, I mean, laughing through talking about murdering someone, but she, but she couldn't have, she wasn't going to murder him then because he was already dead from the apparent heart attack. Wow, let's break this down. Let's bring in Court TV special contributor Ashley Banfield, Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter. Both have been on top of this story uh, from the beginning. Ashley, um, let's start with you. You got this recording. Where did it come from? Well, give me some context here. This is unreal stuff that we're hearing tonight. Yeah, so there's a bit of secrecy to it, but I can tell you that we received a copy of this audio recording from Joseph Ryan's sister. Um, you know, she is very disturbed by the fact that the Phoenix police um, refuse to really consider his death anything other than just a heart attack. Uh, she wants them to open this case, and she wants some answers, and she's not getting any. Uh, she sent this recording to them, didn't get a reply. The FBI also has it. Uh, but she's been quite frustrated by the fact that there's been so much evidence of unbelievable behavior on the part of um, Lori Vallow that it seems just sort of natural that they would consider, uh, you know, opening the case. And now you have her on tape saying that she wanted to murder, using her words, murder her husband, um, her third husband, Joseph Ryan. So it's fascinating to, to, to know that that tape is now in the hands of the police where uh, in the jurisdiction where he died. So the, the tape itself is a recording that she received, anonymous source, uh, but the tape was recorded in Melanie Gibbs' home. Uh, 
Lori was present in the home. Zulema Pastine uh, was present at this meeting. And Melanie Gibb was present at this meeting, as well as other people who are all in some kind of an association with that group preparing a people. And this was a, um, a meeting whereby it seemed Lori was really doing some ministering uh, to a lot of these uh, folks who were gathered. Um, it was recorded on October 19th, 2018. So do the math. Two years ago, right around now, uh, this was exactly six months, well, roughly six months after Joseph Ryan died. Eleven months after this taping, Tylee and JJ would be dead as well. Uh, what's so fascinating about this is that she not only mentioned murdering Joseph Ryan, husband number three, in that clip that you just played, Vinny, she did it again. Have a listen. Speaking to me and said, you need to go to the temple. So I went and met my bishop, and I was like, I'm either going to turn my life to the temple or I'm going to commit murder. So do you want to give me a temple recommend? <laughs> and I was perfectly honest because at that point I had nothing to lose. You get to the bottom rung and I had nothing to lose. And he gave me my temple recommend. And I started going to the temple every week by myself, not with my current husband, just by myself to the temple, to the Mesa Temple, which I love. Um, we moved here from Texas to get away from my ex-husband that was doing all this. But he moved here like five miles away from us just to continue to torture me. That was his whole entire job. And Satan had been torturing me since I was a little kid. Wow. Uh, you probably heard her mention uh, my current husband. So you have to follow the bouncing ball on this one. That would be Charles Vallow, who at that point was still alive. Uh, but Charles Vallow ended up dead. Um, and that is an open investigation. So interesting to hear her speaking in that time frame. Chanley, let me ask you, um, she is talking about murder, killing someone. She's laughing a little, but she's also using a religious justification for all of it as, as the basis of why she should kill someone. Um, how do you think this will or will it affect her current case at all? Great question. We know that the Rexburg Police Department has a copy of this recording that Annie Cushing did give them a copy of it as well as the FBI has a copy of the recording. But someone who did not know about or hear the recording yet, that's Lori Vallow's attorney, Mark Means. I reached out to him today about it. He gave me this con comment. He says, this recording was not produced in discovery responses in Lori Vallow Daybell's case, so he will need time to review and authenticate. But yeah, I also reached out to the prosecutor there, Rob Wood, his office. He didn't respond in time uh, for this evening's show. But, you know, there, like you said, there are not murder charges yet pending against Lori Valadebo. And you got to think that this prosecutor would love for a jury to hear this recording if he could get it into evidence. Yeah, that's the tricky part. That's the very, very tricky part, but um, might keep her from getting onto the witness stand. Now, the Chandler police were investigating the death of another one of her husbands, Charles Vallow. Uh, what are they saying, if anything, about this recording? I reached out to the department. They say they do recording in their investigation. They say it's a very active homicide investigation into the death of Charles Vallow, who was shot by Lori's brother, Alex Cox, July 2019. And so this is part of their, their file. They are going through a lot of information there, the Chandler PD. And the, the detective I spoke to today said that he wouldn't say where they actually obtained this recording that we just listened to, but we do know through Ashley that Annie Cushing did not give them a copy of it so it's unclear how they get how they got it but they, we do know that they share a lot of information with Idaho and other jurisdictions because the evidence is the same they all sort of are working together he went on to tell me that while there's a lot of information in Charles Vallow's case and that Lori Vallow is a person of interest there are pending or possible charges that could come he did want to correct some previous reporting that has been out there from the Chandler PD that Possible charges could be against Lori Vallow as early as December. He said that is incorrect, that there's no certain time frame. They're really trying to piece this together and take their time for the integrity of the entire investigation. All right, Ashley. Joseph Ryan was in Phoenix when he died. Uh, what are the Phoenix police now saying about this recording? 
Yeah, that would be a really good question, right? That's exactly what Annie Cushing wants to know. Uh, what are you going to do? This is pretty pretty incredible stuff. You got a woman who's actively being investigated for not one, but a couple of murders, uh, to our knowledge. And um, here she is on tape talking two times about wanting to murder uh, her current or her then um, ex-husband. Oh my God, there's so many husbands. Okay, her third husband. Um, they're not answering her, which is pretty unsatisfying if you think about it. And some of the other things that uh, are pretty remarkable on this tape is how Lori Vallow speaks about her third husband. You can really tell from what she's saying and some um, false allegations, quite frankly, against Joseph Ryan uh, that she hated him, that she really hated him. Uh, she makes a mention of um, to, to this group of people that she's ministering to, it sounds like, um, that, she, that he raped her two children. That, that didn't happen, according to investigators. Uh, there was an allegation made about one of the children. It was investigated and it was dismissed. Uh, but she went ahead and told these people that he was sexually abusing them and that she didn't want to have to take uh, the daughter that she shared with him uh, to visit him and their custody issues. It's pretty aggressive stuff. I want you to hear how she toss or how she talks about Joseph Ryan as a well as a monster. Have a listen. And people will come up to me all the time and be like, "Sister, are you okay?" And I'd be like, "No, I'm not okay." And I just keep crying because I didn't want to tell anybody what was going on. I was just having my own pain, and I felt like so. The court told me that if I didn't take my daughter to him and drop her off with him as a five-year-old every weekend or every other weekend or whatever the schedule was, that they would put me in jail. So, I had to go take her to this monster, my little sweet little baby girl, and drop her off. And then I would go to the temple and I would cry and I felt like someone was just stabbing me in the stomach with a knife all the time. I felt physical pain. I felt so much physical pain and emotional pain and mental pain. And in the meantime, I was dealing with a husband and two stepkids and my two kids and then waking up screaming in the middle of the night and night sweats and terrors and all the things that go along with everything that happens with that. And so I just turned it all over to the Lord. I'm like, I can't do it. You do everything for me. I can't do it. All right, Ashley, let me ask you about the timing of this. Is, is there any significance to it? Is there any connection to husband number five, Chad Tabell? Ah, Chad Tabell. Well, there was some discussion of um, them potentially referring to his, um, his ministry, his, his books, his writings, his teachings in that meeting. Um, but Annie Cushing tells me that Lori Vallow at this point, October 2018, October 19th specifically is what the metadata on this uh, on this recording indicates, had not met Chad Daybell yet. So I think that one of the things that anyone listening to Lori speaking needs to think about is, if you think Lori was under the spell of Chad Daybell in everything that's happened and in, in all the reporting of all these incidents, et cetera, this tape. It's 40 minutes of somebody who sounds off the wall. Uh, and I, when I say that, I, I don't mean to be disparaging of a religion. I mean off the wall in the things that she says. And so I think the timing of this is really interesting, Vinny, for everyone who is following this case to look very carefully at the kinds of things that this woman says before she knew that man. That's so important because, uh, you know, a lot of people have looked at the following Chad Daybell, but maybe... There was some sort of pre-existing condition, I think. We'll, leave it that. <laughs> well, you know what? In fact, uh, if you want to know just how off the wall uh, some of the things were that she said, 9 o'clock, right nine off the top of the 9 o'clock Eastern. Right. Top of the next hour, we've got more of these recordings. Uh, and